Oh look, another humongous piece of foam. That must mean it's time for another b -b 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 board build. This is gonna be our August board and it is going to be a particularly spicy one. I don't know if you guys have heard of this little game called Warhammer 40,000, but it's kind of a rough and tumble place. It's not something you'd really want your summer home, but in the grim darkness of the far future, there are factories that produce all of the necessary sustenance for humans. And sometimes that sustenance is made for humans out of humans. The corpse starch. This is going to be a corpse starch factory. Right now I have a three by four piece of foam and that specific size is because I've gotten into a little game called Necromunda. I got my models right here. I'm gonna play Escher and Goliath. Necromunda is typically played on a larger board, but this is also gonna be perfect for maybe smaller games of Warhammer 40,000. And we're gonna try Kill Team at some bigger sizes and see how it goes. But first I gotta build it. say that was 80% effective. It's a little, you know, I wouldn't pull on it, but I think that that'll stay on the ground. And that ground looks a lot like the local community swimming pool. Now it's time to build up this factory. This is an ultra modular terrain pack that gives you everything you need to build the ultimate corp starch factory. You know, mom and pop corp starch factories, they can only process like, you know, maybe if they're lucky, a hundred bodies a day, but a proper corp starch industry. I mean, you can take on an entire planet's worth of not only corpses, but also mouths. First to build some buildings. And this is just the buildings. There's even more stuff that goes inside of it all. So what is corp starch? Well, obviously, you know, what it is in the name, but why would you need corp starch? Well, it really comes down to Warhammer 40,000's Hive Cities. Hive cities are pretty much the worst thing you can possibly imagine. It's basically anti-terraforming. So usually terraforming is taking a planet that can support life and making it so that it can support life. But what a hive city is, is it's basically just a gigantic continent spanning city that is just ruining the planet, making it absolutely uninhabitable. Everything has to be brought into the planet. And so the only resource they really have available to them is the people who are already living there. And you know, those people, they have a lot of protein, they have a lot of carbs, they have a lot of sugars, and you can't just let those go to waste. And they can make for some very tasty snacks. There we go, it is all coming together and it is all printed in beautiful Soraya Tech resin. Soraya Tech resin is the best in the biz and if you wanna give it a try for yourself, you can use our affiliate code Eons of Battle to save 8% off of one or five kilograms of Fast Navy Gray. Now, the, everything looks great, but I think the floor could really use something. It could really use something to make it look like it's not just drawer liner. It's so big. That's what she said. Gosh, how am I gonna paint this? I've had these things forever and I'm excited to use them up. It just dropped dead. I don't know what's happening, but I kind of like it. Everything's fine. Neat. Well, that was a crazy amount of fun. All right, now to prime everything else and then go to town. And everything will be primed in three, two, one. Prime, no. Oh, now that it actually has a layer of paint on it, hiding all of the little imperfections, Oh, it's really, really, really cool. And man, is this gonna take a heck of a lot of paint. I'm not gonna let myself worry too much about what color. I'm kind of just gonna let my mind go blank and see what ends up happening. 
Shiny purple. Why not? A little bit of blue. All right, all right, it's black now. <laughs> I have a really hard time making washes and I have a feeling when this dries, it won't have washed anything but darkened it, but I think I can bring it back. But now this is gonna need some serious time to dry and so now it's time to work on all of those buildings. I'm gonna start with this big building and really figure out what I wanna do. Just a little bit of magenta because I have to. And a little yellow. Really want this to have a very sinister look. And I want to really emphasize all of the lovely details in these meat making machines. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. On one side, it's a maybe clean, if a bit stylized, like dentist office. And then on the other side, a grim, dark meat packing factory. Now it is time to work on all these walkways that are gonna let my miniatures traverse the battlefield in relative safety, or at least have an easier time getting around. And to do all of these, I'm gonna have to say goodbye to this little paint cup and lock and load. Oh, I love the airbrush. But unfortunately, I cannot take you where I am going. And that is lots and lots and lots of washing. The wash is now complete and this board is looking grim and grimy. It probably hasn't been cleaned since the this factory arrived on this hive planet. And knowing how awful Warhammer 40,000 is, it probably arrived on the planet 9,999 years ago, which is the first time that there were more people than food necessary on this planet. But it is a little bit dark, and I think just the thing to bring it out of this darkness is going to be a little bit of dry brushing. I always like to dry brush with the brightest silver possible so that it really, really stands out. It's kind of like doing an edge highlight over everything. And it's important to use the biggest brush possible when you're doing this much. The silver dry brushing really made it look like metal and I would love to put it all together and see what it looks like, but really, this is only half of the board build. And for the other half, I'm gonna have to get a little bit of a closer look. All the big steps are done of this terrain build. Now it is time for all the nitty gritty details. And this terrain pack is available to our Patreon supporters for the month of August at the EOB terrain tier, or if you prefer My Mini Factory, you can subscribe to our tribes. These barrels, if I can't believe it's not corpse starch, need a little bit of blood. I mix some Blood for the Blood Got technical paint with a little bit of brown, a little bit of blue, and a healthy splash of gloss medium. Now it's a bit more like a contrast paint. I slobber this all over the wet surfaces to darken them. Now I have one more idea of how to beautify these disgusting tangs, and that is with some stencils. First I used a round stencil to paint some yellow circles, and then a black biohazard symbol right in the middle. Now this is a very important safety warning. This concoction is not safe to eat until it has been properly prepared with the artificial flavors and preservatives. To make the symbols look a little more realistic, I sponged some green paint over them to make some chips and scratches and a black wash to blend them into the rest of the weathering. Now one of these tanks is the hero tank, the most important tank, the one that accepts fresh ingredients and processes them into the base raw flesh material. For this tank, I used a toothbrush to add in some splashes where the new ingredients are added. And then there is this accessory, the skull catcher. This cage separates the useful skulls from the rest of the soup. I painted this to match the rest of the green machinery and the Zenithal did a great job of preparing the skulls. These skulls are a necessary component to the Imperial manufacturing, housing cloned brains for servo skulls, dipped in gold for religious ornamentation, or pulverized and turned into high quality kitchenware. Don't you hate it when you open up your can of lunch tuna that we all have at about 1 p.m. and it looks like this? Pretty gross. Now that these stackable tanks are finished, it's time to delve a little deeper into the factory and see how this 
rather grotesque pile of goo turns into the delectable can of corpse starch. It's a highly secretive process of exactly what herbs and spices go into the corpse starch process, and each factory has their own secret formula. But after that, it all comes down to the canning process. All these components come together to make it work, and to make it easier on myself, I'm gonna make it all have its own base. I took some plastic recycled from a keep out sign and cut it big enough to hold all the canning components. To make these floorings a little more interesting, I'm gonna get a little fancy with them. A black prime to start off, and then some orange, yellow, and red paint. This is all in preparation for some chipping medium. I made myself a template of hazard stripes big enough for the flooring, and then it was time for the final layer. A white paint in preparation for yellow, and then orange, which I spilled all over the place. Luckily, this will be heavily weathered, so not a mistake, just a happy little accident. Then I airbrushed over the stencil, which gave me my zenithal stripes, and then it was back to the old toothbrush to get the paint nice and chipped. I find a toothbrush works well, stabbing the bristles down to get the crack started, and then dragging the bristles across the surface to make them larger. That is some well-trodden flooring. Now for the machines. They all got a white primer. The conveyor belts come in three flavors, empty cans, filled cans, and open. The canning and filling machines are a recent invention of the Imperium. In the days of the Unification Wars and the Great Crusade, they wouldn't have dreamed of recycling humans into foodstuff. But now that the Imperium has fallen on some hard times, it's a necessity, and a simple black wash over everything will show off how well used these machines are. I squared some blue over the parts to give them a little pop of color that the rest of the factory has, and then it was time for assembly. Assembling an assembly line. I used ultra thin super glue to set these pieces into place, and then I applied a little color to the corpse starch, and these pieces are ready to work. What a lovely story being told through this set. And by lovely, I mean grotesque. The canning station, the beating heart of this factory. Our artist Licorice, who actually did all the concept art for this project, created us a mascot, which really shows how macabre yet utilitarian this whole set is. Of the people, for the people. Now, with the canning stations done, there's only one thing left to do, and that is the forklifts. And we have a very unique take on the classic forklift. The Imperium has a shortage of Worklift certified workers, mostly because they're being turned into corpse starch. But how appropriate for a factory full of dead people for the main workforce to be made of nearly dead people. Recycling servitors. Waste not, want not. These spider-shaped machines are fully customizable with tons of options for arms and legs. These machine folks scurry around collecting misplaced cadavers and lifting and loading pallets of fresh ingredients and corpse starch ready to be shipped throughout the hive. These machinations have more life in them than the rest of the machines, so I gave them a Zenithal Prime to start off with. These recycler servitors are a fairly unique thing to this Hive City, but they had the opportunity to place this Hive City on the map with great military applications. They could follow around Imperial Guard regiments and do their thing recycling, providing fresh rations to all of the troopers who survived the battles. However, through Imperial bureaucracy, perhaps it was even Lord Solar himself decided that that idea was maybe a little much even for the Imperium of Mankind, so they've been relegated to toiling in the corpse starch factories of this city. I sprayed these machines in eye-catching yellow, and using the airbrush, I gave them brown feet, gunmetal, shredding machines, and a white head. Pro tip, always paint the head a different color. It makes for a very striking miniature. Now that they look like happy little machines straight from Bob the Builder, I blasted them with grime, getting washed into every nook and cranny. This gave them that grim dark vibe that just a little bit of sponging perfected. These servitors can wander the cannery for centuries, providing the local hive community with ethically sourced nutritious corpse starch. And it tastes just like mom used to make. The way I'm gonna use these spider recycler servitors in game is they're gonna provide light cover, but they're also gonna be interactable terrain. If a model moves within base contact of these guys, they can move them six inches wherever they want, providing actual mobile cover. Getting those cover saves exactly where you need them. Now, I've been working a lot on corpse starch and the different ways that those move across the factory, but I haven't done much with corpses yet. And I think it's time to change that. Look at all these delicious corpses, all bagged up in biodegradable bags, which go into the final product and provide a good source of fiber. I gave these cadavers a coat of black prime, and then I sprayed tan from one direction, and then a green-white from the other direction. I sprayed them one at a time, putting these finished corpses, very appropriately, into a condiments cup. The last corpse has been painted, and if you're ever wondering what makes our Patreon unique, corpse STLs. But now it's time to go assemble it all and see what this factory looks like. This is my favorite board. This is now my absolute favorite board. It's 
tastefully tasteless. Ah, oh, and it just tells such an amazing story of, you know, the, the bodies, the willing participants coming here, moving up through the factory, being turned into product, the product sitting over here and then being fed through these tubes to the assembly lines, the assembly lines, getting everything ready to go to the front lines. It is absolutely incredible. Oh, I can already envision the new rules I'm gonna write for maybe three or four player kill team. We've got vantage points, line of sight blocking terrain, insignificant terrain, spider robots, and everything in between. All of this terrain is gonna be available to our Patreon supporters for the month of August at the EOB terrain tier, or if you prefer My Mini Factory, you can find us on Tribes. It's so, it's so beautiful. Ah, oh, thanks for watching.